YouTubers. All right, I'm going to view my BMW channel on YouTube. I'm getting out my microphone on my laptop on my MSI just to see if it's sound okay and if we record the high quality of my voice. You know, when my voice rumbles, is because I just wake up freshly and it's sound resurrected and old. So, um, hopefully, I'm going to start to do a little scrolling down. All right. This is just my YouTube channel where I put my um my BMW jobs online, some of the jobs that I recorded. Although some of it is not exactly pinpoint tutorial to show people step by step what to be done. Can't show all the secrets. Sometimes I show certain things and sometimes I hide certain things. All right, I have about 2,762 subscribers. All right, let me scroll down and look. I'm working on this car. I'm going to the shop today to work on this Good car. morning, YouTubers. I'm going to work on this car. It's F12. I was on this car last week. The VTG unit is in red. It, uh, it was working last week, but the VTG unit is... Uh, transfer box control module it was in red so i'm gonna start it out today as we need to put the car up on a lift and we need to um we need to put the car up on a lift and we need to look at the wiring i'm gonna do some testing today make sure that the ground is sound and solid and make sure that terminal 30 and terminal sorry terminal 30 well, it goes to it powers the um the VTG direct hot not switch, and then the one that is switch is five amps that probably give power to the VTG uh sorry terminal thirty run directly straight to the VTG control unit, and um that one is unswitched that one is at at all times, but that is for the motor that is inside of uh, the VTG um gearbox in that engage four wheel drive um. I should say motor. There's a there's a motor that is controlled by the control module, and the five amps is for turning on the module. After you know which you know when turn on terminal 15, the cast you would turn on the uh, control module by waking it up with a line term called terminal 15. So we're going to look at certain things. Uh, let me see if I can pull the wire diagram like this one right here. Um, let me go and find out the wire diagram for the car. We are going to go into the file code list and we're going to you know, click on the CGM flex ray line pass, line fault and pass three. This one right here. This line we're going to check out today. We're going to check it, but I don't have the oscilloscope. I need to have the oscilloscope to test the output of the waveform. On the flex ray whenever terminal 15 is turned on we want to test test it from the zgm the central gateway model it is what the master control unit is about the flex ray so hopefully we can check that um later on let me see if i can go to the wire diagram okay this is the vtg control unit as i was saying before this right here, fuse 138, is the five amps that powers the module on when terminal 15 is switched on. And the CAS you would turn on this. This wire right here that says X16710 is on pin three. And this one right here is being turned on by CAS unit when it turn on the start stop one on the car. It um terminal 15 is a wake up wire that wake up the control unit. The same terminal wire goes to the ICM and the DSC that wakes them up. And um, the same wire goes there to wake up the DSC unit and wake up also the ICM. ICM stands for Integrated Chassis Management and DSC stands for Dynamic Stability Control. So I think that wire is working. I think we have to pay attention to the reception of the ground here. This wire here that says X10594. This is all full brown called Terminal 31. It's a two and a half inch gauge wire. Not, sorry, not two and a half inch gauge. Sorry, um, I don't know. Two and a half millimeters, I don't know. Uh, sorry, two and a half gauge wire. Two or two point five. I don't know what they call it. Millimeter. Or... Anyway, it's full brown wire. All right. 
this 30 amps fuse right here at 178 all these two fuses are good this 30 amps right here it's a direct terminal 30 so you connect it right to the 30 part this is your door the number door not the number 30 right here is within this gray area of the part of the rear fuse box it's a terminal 30 hot at all times we can actually probe this with ground and we can test if the ground is okay well the ground will be not me the ground will not be measured from the rear distribution because uh, we have to touch on the body of the car but in order for us to test if the ground that goes to the control unit is okay because this ground right here connect directly to the body part we have to now trace where that ground is connected and see if we can pull it off and see if there's corrosion there or water ingress or some kind of a green morass that may have developed and then we can actually um, rub it off with some sandpaper or wire brush and then we put it back and then we can, you know, we can run a continuity check from the point of connection where it is in the connector to the point of the body. And if the meter goes out with a beep without any hesitation, like beep, 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 once it goes like beep, 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 you know, there's some impedance in the electron flow in the ground. So we know that there's some kind of resistance, isn't it? So there's one way we can test that if the ground is okay. Or we can now we can actually cut a part of the installation away and then we can clip on one of the alligator clips wire on it and then clip on that alligator at the end to the body of the car and then give it direct ground that way just to make sure that we isolate out that hey, there's any ground problem to the control module and then we turn on terminal 15 and see if the model jump back online then we run a vehicle test and see if the control unit is being read out by ISTA and that is one way we can actually do 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 something so um this right here on this is the, these are the fr flex ray this is fr right here in this red cross as a f frbp and frbm these two wires are connected to the um the transfer box on pin six and pin seven but they connected on optimal year 2010 on pin 34 and this i'm gonna try track down these and find them to see well after an oscilloscope that oscilloscope is not bought yet I want to check the waveform output after I tur turn on terminal 15, the waveform output should be there, and so on. If the waveform output is not be there, then the probably central gateway module is at fault, or the wiring leading up to the central gateway module, because we have a junction point somewhere along the line there. There's a junction point that meets up of these two wires. These two wires, the flex ray wires, the two wires there, they, are, they, they, they lead all the way up from under the body of the car, go all the way up to the top left of the car when it's standing in front of the car the top left corner the two wires run go all the way up there and then go they go through the center firewall and then they go over to the uh the zgm that is under that is on the left side on the inside the dash when you're inside the car so it, there's a lot of i don't know if i have to do pull down to find those things man. okay as you can see the entire wire diagram is in full screen okay this is a transfer box here that says the i-49 and as we can see, the two lines are protected with a resistor in it. As we can see that, you see these two arrows here, these curved round arrows say that the color code can be either one of this. So the Germans call it pink, they call it RS. It's what they call black, swatch, SW. And then now blue will be BL. And then you can see the designate, the line is identified as flex ray FR. Underscore BP, I don't remember, I don't remember what this mean BP. And then the BM right here, I do not know what that, um, I don't remember what that, that designate is, the, the two letters there, I don't know. I don't know. But anyway, it's on pin 6 and pin 7 of the transfer box. We're going to want to use an oscilloscope to pro back probe these two wires and to see the waveform output after we turn on terminal 15. Because we can test if all these five wires right here on the left over here. We can test if all of them is good. All we got to do, we're going to put the car up on the ice up in this area. We kind of pull out the connector of the VTG and then we, uh, you know, we'll pull the terminal 15 is on before we put that car up in the air. And then what we do now, we take the multimeter, put on voltage setting, and then we put the ground here, back probe the, the, the brown wire with one with, with, our, with our black lead from the multimeter. And then we you now use a red lead of the multimeter to probe this one, terminal 30, at, at all times. You should get volt, battery voltage there without hesitation, if it is good. And if pin 8 is good also, we should get battery voltage here. And also terminal 15 should be on because a wake up wire. If all of these are checked out, I mean all of these four wires are integrity and, and in terms of in the connector. Okay. And now we have to now check these two. And uh, we can check them with the plug um disconnected from the VTG transfer box control unit. And um as you can see, they said from all year 2010 up then the wire color codes will have a pink with a red stripe. As you see the opposite here, it said the 
the main part of the wire has a color of pink but it's a blue stripe so you see this is up to model year 2010 of august but from model year of 2010 up from september going all the way up car the car we're working is a 2012 it was released in november of 20, 20, 2011 so we can see now the wire color code slightly changes and they they call this one right here that a wire here is green with red stripe and they call red rot that's the name for ross like in the name ross child ross child is really red shield so therefore the word rt is for red but for us who do not know all right let us make the video go forward and let me see if i can help explain certain more of that stuff as you can see let me pause the video right here it's uh the, the, the vtg control unit on the bmw f12 model year 2012 it has an eight pin block connector and it can connect it to the transfer box and then um it it it, it does not use pin four and pin five on it these are not used so it's only used six it first have an input and not for every person who did not know that in german designation for input wires and output wires they are called type and they are typed by a letter e is called in german n n guard which it means input and then m would be called i don't remember what m called but the m designate here is for ground and then anything have to do with a a in german this is uh asgabi it means output so whenever you see like say the flex ray bus signal that goes to the central gate i'm not talking about it comes from the central gateway and it goes to the vtg on pin six and on pin seven these wires when you see two of them it's just for redundancy cyclic check uh, crc meaning that if one wire goes out the control module can still correspond with the central gateway okay and this central gateway will still generate a file code to say it's not seen one of the signals on one of the wires and so on so you know a file code will be generated if one of the wires is off because it will only be communicating over one so they use one to check against the other and they do not use one to because if it bursts then you know you, you, you probably can't communicate with the uh the vtg and so on and um they use two wires one for you know redundancy purposes meaning that if one way about the other one coming as redundancy to basically take up the work of the other one so that we can actually troubleshoot the car diagnose it and fix it by tracing out the air of the file code and then we run a test plan and we pull up the wire diagram we can now go in the car to see where we must look at the wire and trace it and see if it's broken you know what i mean so e slash a mean input output transmission signal take place in both directions on the two wires and so on and one is used to back up the other just like when you have the older bmws like the e36 they use uh, the ews with another control module called the akmz to back up the vehicle central encoding key which is listed the vehicle order so therefore if one control unit goes up you can still read out the central encoding key using another control module because they have the assumption that two control modules can't go there at one time sometimes they use our uh, four control modules in the earlier bmw so therefore that is kind of a crc principle they use their cyclic redundancy check so therefore um, the same pattern has been used there as well okay as we can see you now that power supply from terminal 30b terminal 30b is an input on pin 8 to the vtg it is controlled by the cast unit terminal 30b is switchable by the cast unit sending on turning on a relay which turns on the downstream control units that is on the terminal so anything have to do with terminal 30b is cast control anything have to do with supply ter ter supply terminal 30 right here on pin 1 it meaning that it's not switched it's just run hot all the time but you know that is for the motor i think that is providing the higher power output for the motor to turn out the worm screw to engage the clutch is in the transfer box and to actually unwind it okay so these are what we're going to check later on and find out if the ground is good if this one is good if the cast access system terminal 15 is good if that is good we now know that the problem will be either with the, with um the central gateway model and the the input the input is supposed to make to the vtg and then a, a message is sent back on the same wires Back to the central gateway whenever the information is sent out when terminal 15 is on and the signal is not sent back then the, the central gateway will generate a fault code for the flex ray um bus signal that is not being seen by the um the vtg so that is the reason why we get the fault code and we can be able to run a test plan with it and that is how we know how to troubleshoot it by the next thing we're going to do is to run an oscilloscope on it to check the waveform output and so on if everything is okay on these pins if all supply thread is good with ground with wake up and so on and the bus signal is okay and this one here for supply terminal 30b is okay terminal 15 
You know what? Okay, sorry. This one is terminal 30B. Okay, yes. Terminal 30B is also switched on by a CAS unit. And terminal 15 is also um, switched on by the CAS unit. So I do not understand this. The problem with them, they say that fuse 138, because whenever they say fuse 138, you're just like right here. It's like they're saying that when this one is running directly from terminal 30, it is on switch. But whenever they use a letter B, it meaning that the thing is switched. The only way it can be switched on. Unless, of course, they are input from the CAS. If not from the CAS, then it will be input from the, the, either the DSC unit or input on from the ICM. Or it's a power supply. So, okay, if a power supply comes directly from FUS38, then we can now look at the wire diagram more to the left and we can see. We want to find out if it's a switch. There's a, there's a junction point right here, which is referred to as X13, um, S3, 3B. There's a junction point sometime in, in, in when you're working on a car, you have to do physical inspection whenever you get no voltage on one of these wires. They are junction point, as you can see, the two wires appear to be conjoined at some point and so on. So it's the same thing with the flex rate. If we go back here in the diagram, we can now, um, we can go back into the diagram and we can look right here. Right here, the same thing. X13 asterisk 2B, I already identify which location of the car. When you stand up in front of the car, to the top left of the car is where you have this junction point met, where the two flex ray wires coming from the transfer box, they go all the way up from under the car, going all the way up to the, you know, the front, top left, when you stand in front of the car. Their, their junction points are meted up there. And that's where I want to really go to find out if there's a problem, because the engine in that car has been changed. And somehow, when they put the engine in, I don't know if anybody would interfere with anything there, like, you know, the wiring or something. So, you know, anyway, when they finished putting the engine in the F12, the VTG was working when I go there last week, because it was in green. As a matter of fact, it has a couple of trouble codes. Yes, it wasn't calibrated, and I calibrated it. When I calibrated it, it take off the, the dynamic stability control light of the dash, and it, the ABS light also goes away. You know that symbol of a car in the cluster, where it has these two twisted road under the vehicle wheels that that light was on because the VTG wasn't calibrated, it was working. So therefore something caused it not to work. Now it had to be a body ground or the two flex rays wires are being interrupted by something that is in the, the signal part of the electron flow. So today I want to go to the shop and check it, but I don't know. Voltage output, it will show you something, yes, but intermittent problems will not be picked up by voltage. Because you know it's you know, we have to measure you now that both in the form of wave output, flex ray wave has very high speed transmission too. So we have to use a flex ray system, uh measuring system to measure like an oscilloscope and so on, high speed uh oscilloscope. So I uh, yet to order that one, that's kind of pretty expensive. I don't know what the heck I'm gonna get money from the buyers. So I've got at least five hundred to get a good one. So on. So okay, YouTubers, I'm just gonna explain something concerning BMW F12. I'm gonna close out this session. And goodbye for all the persons who learn something from my channel. Although my channel is not all that tutorial, tutorial like Diagnose Dan and the others. So, you know, I'm just a rough guy. You know what I mean? I'm not a teacher. I just go through stuff roughly and do it roughly. And, you know. Anyway, thanks for viewing my channel. Have a nice day, everyone. Goodbye. End of session.